As we know, with the pandemic, a lot of things changed when it comes to the uh, work-life balance. People went home to work. A lot of people made it work. Uh, Productivity didn't seem to really be affected that much. But uh, as we come out of the pandemic, a lot of bosses are saying, all right, let's go. Time to get everybody back together. But not so fast, say a lot of employees. Let's talk about how this is all going to be accomplished and bosses and the employees can both benefit and everybody be happy about this again. Spencer O'Leary joins us now. Managing Remote Employee Specialist and also the CEO of a company called Active Ops. Welcome in, Spencer. Thanks for being here. Hi, JT. So uh, it looks a little different as everybody's starting to come back. Uh, bosses surprised that the uh, open arms aren't being uh, well received by a lot of employees. Yeah, I think we've got a real mixed message now in the uh, in the job market. We've got some employers who are definitely thinking they can just demand employees come back to the office. And having spent, you know, these employees have spent the last 15 months working from home. And as you just said, they've demonstrated that that productivity hasn't fallen. In fact, for many workers, productivity has increased and improved over that period. There's some other metrics that we should watch that that have decreased over the period. So there's concern in the market for employee well-being. Uh, Workplace stress causes things like sickness and attrition uh, and along that spectrum, some really horrible things. And they've definitely decreased those metrics during the pandemic. Uh, But there's also a number of employers out there that are incentivizing people to continue not solely working from home, but adopting what's now been called the hybrid working model, where people are allowed to work from home on certain days of the week. That's when they get their production work done. And then they come together in a very different style office, maybe for a couple of days a week. That's where they join in congregation. They collaborate, they, they innovate and they create ideas. Uh, And that new hybrid working model seems to be the model that's attracting employees and causing this great shift in the job market. Spencer, are different age groups more apt to cooperate with employers and say, "Okay, fine, let's go back to work versus, hey, I'd really like to keep doing this? Does it vary by age? I think it does vary by age. And there's some statistics. The recent Microsoft survey, they quoted 40 percent of people are thinking about quitting their jobs if their employer can't offer some sort of flexible working. That number goes up to over 50%, 54% of Gen Z workers, so 18 through 25 workers, uh, said that they would leave. I suspect, uh, and this is speculation, just knowing some of the people I've spoken to in, in, in our customer base, we help managers right across North America be better managers by using our smart software. And talking to some of them, there seems to be an older generation as well who perhaps have never been used to working from home and have now really got used to the fact that they can still work for seven or eight hours a day and not have a two- or three-hour commute to get into a city center office location and get back home. I think there's probably a middle generation there, the 30s and 40s-year-olds, that they're the ones that have have perhaps suffered most through the pandemic uh, of that workplace stress metric and a reduction in innovation and creativity. They're not like the Gen Zs who are used to using online collaboration tools and social tools to interact with each other. Uh, and uh, I suspect that bit of the market uh, is less uh, less likely to continue to work from home full time. But this new right. hybrid model of working from the office and working from home seems to be across that generation spectrum. Yeah, it seems that it's give and take on both sides with, you know, coming in sometimes and, hey, allow me to work from home when I can because I am getting it done. Productivity, like we said, uh, it's not really been affected that bad. Obviously, this doesn't affect other uh, jobs out there like manufacturing and assembly lines and trades, you know, like plumbers and contractors and, you know, first responders, obviously, coaches and stuff. They can't work from home. So they, they've never really been uh, been working remotely or have to deal with this. But uh, moving forward, uh, who's going to compromise the most, do you think, in all of this? Because economists are now calling this the great resignation uh, with people saying, well, if I can't get what I want in this work-from-home model... Uh, see you, boss. I'm going to try something else. Yeah, the try something else is going to be interesting. You know, demand is outstripping supply of the workforce at the moment. We're seeing a number of people not going back to work, maybe the lower paid uh, of the market who have said, it's just not worth my while. I'm the second earner in a family. When I take into account my commute costs, my clothing costs, my food costs, my, my childcare or looking after my relatives cost, it's just not worth me working. We can afford for me not to work. So that, that reduces the supply in the market. We're seeing a lot of work come back from overseas, from the Philippines and from India. Those countries still struggling with COVID. They really struggle to work from home in three and four generation, multi-generation households. So 
demand for work is outstripping supply. And we're working with a lot of organizations across North America to help them implement a remote management capability so that hybrid work is something they can offer. They can offer that as an attraction and, and, and attract the right talent uh, and good talent into their business. Organizations who don't implement a good hybrid work management capability or just don't implement hybrid work at all, I think they are going to see the effects of this great resignation. All right. Very good. Spencer O'Leary, great information and always fluid.